In this video, we're going to look at working with images, tables, and the table of contents in Google Docs. So first thing I'm going to do is insert an image. So I'm going to go over to insert. Remember when you insert images, you can upload them from your computer, search the web, go from your Google Drive, you know, any number of things. For now, I'm going to pull one in from my Google Drive, and we'll just use the dog because he's, he's an easy one. And click on that image. I'm going to resize it, make it a bit smaller. Now you'll notice when I click on that image, some different options pop up. One option is to have it in line with the text. So you'll see how it's right there in line with that first paragraph. Another option is to have the text wrap around it. You can see what that looks like. We could also have it break the text, which this would be a little bit more applicable if, the, if it was like in the middle of the, uh, of the paragraph. You could also put it behind the text, which is kind of weird in my opinion. <laughs> you could also put it in front of the text. So you have a lot more options now where you can put your image within the Google Doc. I'll go back to inline for the moment. Um, another thing you can do with that image, I'm going to click on it one more time. You can even hyperlink an image. So if you click on the image, go up to your links, you could link that image to something. Um, I'll just link it to my website for the moment. Uh, so now if someone were to click on that image, they could be, they could go to a website. So that's how that works. Um, other things that you can do, as I mentioned, tables. You can insert a table into a Google Doc, and this can be really helpful. So to insert a table, go ahead again, click in the doc, go up to insert, and table is one of the options. So from there, you can determine how big you want your table to be, how many rows, how many columns. This can all be changed later, but give, you, give it your best guess. And you insert your table. You can put your text. Um, things like that. Now to edit the table, I will say, this is where it gets a little bit funny. So to insert the table, you went to the insert menu, right? However, to edit your table, you do that in the format menu, format table. You can insert rows, delete columns, you know, all those kinds of things can happen there in the format menu. You'll also see within each box, you do have a little drop down arrow that gives you some options. Um, whether you're going to have grid lines, things like that. Up here at the top of the table, you can see there's some other sorting options. The little plus sign allows you to insert columns. So you can do some of that right there inside the table. Okay, now we're going to look at headings and the table of contents. So right now what we have is just normal text, nothing special about it. I'm going to go here to week one, highlight that, go up to my styles menu, and I'm going to make this a heading one. So what's going to happen is it automatically will format it to a larger text, put some additional spacing around it. And let's make these items a heading two. Okay, not quite as big as heading one, but you can see it still stands out. Go back to week two, heading one, make these heading two. All right, I think you can see where we're going. Week three, again, will be a heading one. And this will be a heading two. So now I have some different headings. And, you know, from there, I can obviously put text, content below, all the information. But I've got these, these headings. Now, first cool thing, if you go over here and you click show document outline, it's going to show you those summaries right here on the left. And what's neat is you can click on it and it'll take you right there. So that's one thing. This is the document outline. I, I like this view. If you don't want to see it, just close it up. Okay. However, you can also insert, like I said, a table of contents. So I'm going to click right above this week one, go to the insert menu. We're going to scroll all the way down to table of contents. You have two choices. It could be a table of contents that shows page numbers or one that shows blue links. I usually go with blue links, totally up to you. <laughs> so once you do that, you see up here at the top, this little well, table of contents, and there are the links. So if I click on week one, it's going to take me directly to that header. Let's go back up. What if I wanted to jump directly to week three? Click. It takes me right to that header. So the table of contents uses your headers to create a table of contents that is clickable. So let's say you have a multi-page handbook for your ensemble. Put a table of contents at the top, and then all people have to do is click on the various headings to get to that part of the 
of the handbook. So they're not scrolling through looking for information. It's really great for, again, multi-page things. Um, if you're sharing it with parents or students or anything, it's just a great way to navigate through that Google Doc. Uh, what's also neat, let's say you, you make your table of contents and then you change some things, you update things. If you click on this little circle, update table of contents, it'll update to any changes that you've made. So that's how you work with a table of contents.